All right, on this video, we're going to look at combining functions using arithmetic operations. This would be things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We're always going to get a new function. We have to be very careful, though, if we try division, because we have to make sure that we don't use any x's that would make that denominator equal to 0. All right? Let's start in here. If we want to add two functions, then we just simply take the two functions and using what we know about exponents and so forth, add them together. Remember, you can only add terms that have the same degree. So in this case, x plus 1 and x squared minus 2x plus 3. We'll have to be real careful of our arithmetic and our signs. So I'm going to get, notice, an x squared minus an x plus 4. Oh, let's try f of x equal to x plus 3 plus x cubed minus 7. See, that one was easy. The domain here, though, we have to be careful. x has to be greater than or equal to minus 3, or it won't work. Let's try one here where we've got a fraction. That always can cause some indigestion. All right now, we really need to remember how to put things over a common denominator. And so you remember we do a little multiplying there. If, you, if you're stuck on this, stop the video and check it out. Notice our domain cannot have a minus 3 in it. All right now, let's say we take a look at doing some subtraction of functions. Now, we have to be really careful of signs, S-I-G-N-S, not S-I-N-E-S -E in trigonometry. So let's take care of some uh, subtraction. We've got x squared minus 4x plus 3 minus the quantity x minus 2. x squared minus 4x plus 3 minus x plus 2, and we do some algebra. Don't ask me why I put three things on the equal sign and didn't correct it, but they're equal. Now, let's say we subtract two functions of this type. Ooh, I'm getting adventuresome. Notice the length. x squared plus 4 minus x cubed minus 5x squared, 6x minus 7. x squared plus 4, be careful of your signs, plus 5x squared minus 6x plus 7. Here we go. Minus x cubed plus 6x squared minus 6x plus 11. All right, we've looked at some indifference. Let's take a look at products. Now, this is where you really, really have to be careful. First one, we're going back to that first function we looked at, and we're going to practice multiplying using FOIL. I bet you remember FOIL. At 2x squared plus 6x minus 7x minus 21, 2x squared minus x minus 21. So we had 1 plus that. Remember, that's the very first one of the very first examples we did over x plus 3. So we get 2x squared minus x minus 20 over x plus 3. OK, now in this one, oh, this is going to be an easy one. There's not much you can do here except just simply indicate the multiplication. In other words, 2x minus 1 times the square root of x plus 3. But remember, the domain has to be greater than or equal to minus 3. All right, here comes a harder one. Yeah, let's take a look at multiplying here. And so we have the sum, we have the difference, we have the qu product, and now let's take a short look at the quotient and see what we can do here. They're coming up, some examples. Okay, divide functions like x minus 1 over x plus 4. And we're probably just going to stop right there and say, hmm, as long as x doesn't equal minus 4. See, I'm kind of lazy. I don't like to do long division, and most of the time we don't even need it. We'll look at what to do when we do need it. So let's do another one here, like uh, f of x divided by g of x, and you see the two functions. So again, now notice the domain is going to be very interesting here. Square root of x plus 4 
that's going to impact the domain. X minus 5 is going to impact the domain. And so here we go. We get X is greater than or equal to minus 4, but X can't equal 5 because we can't take the square root of a negative number and we can't divide by 0. If we have another one here like f of x equals over g of x, x minus 3, oh, you're going to like this one. It's special. Over x squared minus 7x plus 12. Now, notice I can factor that denominator. When I factor the denominator, I get x minus 3 over x minus 4. And you notice that we can cross those out and we get 1 over x minus 4. Now, is 1 over x minus 4 equal to the original function? The answer is no, because x can't equal 4 in our answer, but it also can't equal 3 in the original function. So let's draw a graph of that function, and you're going to see something interesting called a hole appear. Notice I'm storing my function. I go into the y equals, and there it is. I'm going to zoom standard. Now, let's change the bounds. Like, I'm going to graph x from 275 to 325, min from minus 1.25 to minus 0.75, and I'm going to go down here and fix my resolution at 1. I want to get a really good graph. Now, watch, you're going to see a hole up here. Did you see that hole? We're going to circle it here. That's a hole. You see that hole? All right, that's a very important place. We'll discuss it a little bit later.